These are facts, all of which only apply to one of these men. This man was a drug addict, lived within a few miles of a famous historical figure, and received 13 Nobel Prize nominations. Just take a guess who I'm describing. If you pick number three, you're right. This man is Sigmund Freud, one of the most prominent psychologists in history, and he developed what is possibly the strangest branch of psychology there is today. There are many branches of psychology that all come together to give us a better understanding of our brain. But first of all, what is psychology? It's the child of philosophy and physiology and is defined by the American Psychological Association as the study of the mind and behavior. Psychology's roots go all the way back to the ancient Greeks with Aristotle. A couple thousand years later, Sir Francis Bacon was credited as the father of the scientific method. He believed that knowledge comes from experience, otherwise known as empiricism. Empiricism would soon be bolstered by philosopher John Locke with his idea tabula rasa. It means blank slate, and put simply, it's the idea that when we are born, our minds are like a blank slate, and the only thing that can fill them is experience. 200 years afterward, Charles Darwin proposed his theory of evolution. Which may not sound psych-related, but psychologists often point to Darwin for being the pioneer of what we would call the evolutionary perspective. Just a a couple decades later is where our story really begins, with a German man called Wilhelm Wundt. Or if you're American, we say Wilhelm Wundt. We're just quirky like that, I guess, I don't know. Wundt is credited for creating the first psychology lab in 1879 in Leipzig, Germany. Wundt, alongside his student Edward Titchener, would go on to form the perspective known as structuralism. This early perspective involves breaking down mental processes by asking people to reflect on their cognitive experience through introspection. Introspection is just looking internally, asking yourself questions about how you feel or think. Several years later, the first American psychologist, Ooh, USA. William James, in true American fashion, disagreed with the Europeans so much that he wrote over a thousand pages explaining how we should do things differently. And his ideas formed together to be known as the perspective that we call functionalism. Functionalism focuses on how our brain develops and adapts to our environment. To highlight the differences, structuralism looks at each part of a mental process, whereas functionalism focuses on how each of your mental processes work together. So if your brain was a sports team, structuralism would take an in-depth look at each of the players, whereas as functionalism would look at how each of the players are able to work together as a team. While this feud was going on, another European wanted a piece of the action. Oh yeah, he's back. And his name is Sigmund Freud. <laughs> And to emphasize just how strange this man really was, let's play everyone's favorite game, Freud or Kanye! I'm gonna give you a quote, and you're gonna tell me whether it was said by Sigmund Freud or Kanye West. Ready? Let's go. I love sleep. It's my favorite. And that was classic Kanye. The more perfect a person is on the outside, the more demons they have on the inside. If you guess Kanye, you're wrong, because that's our boy Freud. Okay, final quote. Love and work, work and love. That's all there is. I'm sure they both love their work, but this quote is from Freud. Freud, in all of his weirdness, developed a branch of psychology known as the psychodynamic perspective or the psychoanalytic perspective, which focuses on the unconscious mind. Back in America, as psychology became more popular, the American Psychological Association was formed under the first APA president, G. Stanley Hall. And about a decade later, we had our first female president of the APA, Mary Witten Calkins. And the second female APA president, Margaret Floyd Washburn, would Washburn stereotypes to the ground as she was the first woman to receive a PhD in psychology. And this is where psychology psychology really ramps up, as we're kicking the early perspectives to the curb and we're gonna need to know a little bit more about our brains than just evolution and the unconscious. Now obviously there's a biological component to our brains, but there's not really a clear consensus on who officially founded this perspective. After Freud, John Watson created behaviorism, which believe it or not, focuses on behavior. Then Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow wanted to give their two cents, so they created the humanistic perspective, which focuses on self-awareness and personal growth. Of course we can't study psychology without talking about things like memory and and problem solving, and that's where Ulrich Neiser came in. And being social creatures, we should probably have someone study that. So Lev Vygotsky became our knight in shining armor to pioneer what would eventually become the socio-cultural perspective. These seven perspectives form the major modern day perspectives of psychology. There's also a bunch of outside branches that all use aspects of the main perspectives, with the biggest of these branches being clinical psychology, which of course includes things like mental health counseling and therapy. Now recently, there's been a new perspective peeking its head into the modern perspectives. It's called positive psychology, 
founded by Martin Seligman and focuses on happiness and well-being. Now that was a lot of information, especially a lot of people, and if you didn't get it all down, don't worry, as in future videos we're going to be taking a deep dive into each of these perspectives and you're going to see a lot more of most of these people. Main takeaways. Psychology is a young science yet has many branches. Freud was a weird dude. And you should subscribe as we're going through Psych 101 in a fun way, all completely for free. And you don't want to miss a video.